Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How to Why on Butterscotch.com. This series, we're taking a look at GarageBand running on the iPad. This episode, we're going to talk about recording other types of instruments besides guitar. Now, we've already shown off GarageBand's ability to use software instruments and to do input from things like the guitar, but you can also record other types of instruments as well, provided you have a microphone input. Now, we're using the Yeti Pro from Blue Microphones. It's a USB microphone that also has XLR input on the bottom, as well as the USB jack. That way, you can use it both digitally and in old-school analog recording sessions. It's a good choice for this type of application because it's fairly high quality, very configurable, and it actually works with the iPad itself. Now you need a couple of things to make this happen. Now the first thing you need is a powered USB hub of some sort because the iPad uh, USB connectivity isn't generating enough power to run a high power device like the uh, Yeti Pro. You do need to have some power coming into the system from elsewhere. You also need to use Apple's camera connection kit and use the little dongle that has USB on the bottom. That will allow you to connect USB devices like the Yeti Pro into the system. Another benefit of the Yeti Pro is it also has a headphone jack on the bottom, so you can hear what's coming through the microphone in your headphones. You won't hear exactly what's coming through here, but if you can't connect your headphones directly to the iPad, at least you'll have a sense of what's going in. On GarageBand, you'll swipe through the instruments until you get to Audio Recorder, and then you'll select it. It'll open up a panel with a big VU meter so you can actually see what your input looks like and whether or not it's too loud. You won't actually be able to hear it through the headphone jack on here until you switch your monitor on. Just like with your electric guitar, you'll tap on the quarter-inch plug here and switch your monitor on. Now on the bottom right hand corner you have a little graphic of the iPad and a note that says to hit the record button to start recording. We'll show you how to do that in greater detail, but you'll do this when you're ready to start recording your voice or a mandolin or an acoustic guitar or something else where the sound travels through the air rather than down a chord. Once you do hit record though, you will have access to a few other effects for your voice so that you don't sound exactly One, like yourself. Two, three, so you can four. sound like you're on the telephone, you can sound like a chipmunk, you can sound like a robot or even like a monster. Now another way you can record input from a microphone and then use it on GarageBand for the iPad is to use the sampler. Click on instruments and then swipe over until you get to sampler, open it up, and now you'll be able to record sounds and then play them back on a keyboard at varying pitches and speeds. To record a new sample, make sure new sample is selected on the right hand side and then hit the big start button over on the left. One, two, record the sound you want four. and then press the big red button again to stop recording. Then a keyboard is going to appear underneath and allow you to play back your sound by pressing on the keys. Now it's going to do its best to match the sound that you just recorded to the note that it corresponds to on the keyboard. We'll show you how to adjust that in a second if it doesn't. After you record it, the waveform will appear in the top right hand corner. You can trim the in and out points by hitting the trim button, then grabbing the handles on either side and then moving them in or out. You can hear how what you've recorded will sound as a loop by hitting the loop button and how it'll sound in reverse by hitting the button that says REV. You probably want to adjust your trim while it's in looping mode so you can hear at best what it's going to sound like as a loop. Then when you hit a note on the keyboard, you'll hear both the sound that you've recorded plus a reference tone that says what that note actually is. You can adjust the tuning of the sound that you've recorded by hitting course up top. This will adjust things very fast. Or if you want to fine tune, you can use the fine tune slider below. You can also adjust the attack and decay of your sound by hitting on the shape button. This will determine how quickly the sound appears at the beginning and how quickly it fades out at the end. While doing any of these adjustments, if at any time you're not happy, you can actually hit the revert button to undo what you've been working on and take you back to the previous step. When you're done adjusting your sound, you can actually hit the My Samples button and this will allow you to save it. You'll see two columns. The left-hand column will be the samples that you're currently working on with the project you're working on now. And the right-hand column will be samples that are already in the library. To add one of the ones that you're working on right now, highlight it in the left-hand column and then tap Add to Library at the top. QWERTY keyboard will appear below. Enter the name that you want to give the sample, and then click Done, and then it'll appear on the list over to the right. Then you can select it at any time, even in another project, by tapping on My Samples, and then selecting it from the list. Once you have a sample selected and loaded up into the keyboard, the keyboard below will function in much the same way as it does over in Keyboard. You have the ability to use the Sustain, you have the ability to arpeggiate the sound, and you have the ability to change your octaves over on the left-hand side. Again, you can change the keyboard layout in case you want bigger or smaller keys, or if you want to do a double-decker mode. That's a look at using a microphone to record into GarageBand for the iPad. Don't forget to check out the other parts of the series. We'll show you how to use some of the other instruments and how to create a song of your very own. And check out the show notes for this part and the other parts in the series at butterscotch.com.